one of the things that I have learned about Hillary Clinton is that one of her heroes, her mentors, was Saul Alinsky. And her senior thesis was about Saul Alinsky. This was someone that she greatly admired and that affected all of her philosophies subsequently. Now, interestingly enough, let me tell you something about Saul Alinsky. He wrote a book called Rules for Radicals. On the dedication page, it acknowledges Lucifer, 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 the original radical who gained his own kingdom. Now think about that. This is a nation where our founding document, the Declaration of Independence, talks about certain inalienable rights that come from our creator. This is a nation where our Pledge of Allegiance says we are one nation under God. This is a nation. This is a nation where every coin in our pocket and every bill in our wallet says, in God we trust. So are we willing to elect someone as president who has as their role model somebody who acknowledges Lucifer? Think about that. If we continue to allow them to take God out of our lives, God will remove himself from us. We will not be blessed, and our nation will go down the tubes. The brother of Pakistani social media celebrity Kandil Balok has committed, admitted to strangling her in a case of honor killing in the province of Punjab Friday night. Muhammad Wasim said he killed his sister due to her social media activities, which challenged social norms in Pakistan. Wasim was arrested on Saturday night while well, the crime reignited debate about so-called honor killings in South Asian nations. Many Pakistanis are calling for the passage of an anti-honor killing law. Dozens of protesters gathered just outside of downtown Cleveland to begin a two-mile march in what they say are efforts to stop presumptive Republican nominee Donald Trump and the GOP convention less than 24 hours before it's scheduled to convene. Jose Secreto Landaverde says he walked more than 300 miles in 27 days from Chicago to make his point. Well, I am here to um, protest against the speech of Donald Trump that is creating so much hate and so much division in our communities. Not far away from this small showing near the Cleveland University campus, thousands of demonstrators from the convention site marched across town over the Carnegie Hope Memorial Bridge, calling for peace and unity. We're kind of hoping we can build up the energy of love in this space before people who are angry come flying through. This is what real power looks like. Despite Sunday's crowds, both large and small, the city is bracing for much worse. Starting Monday, Cleveland Municipal Courts will extend their hours from 8 to 20 hours in order to process what they estimate will be 1,000 arrests a day. Recently, CNN's Don Lemon sparred with constitutional champion Sheriff Clark over the exploding war on police. Let me ask you this. Do we know that, th that generally the American law enforcement officers are racist? Do we know this? First of all, this whole anti-police rhetoric is based on a lie. There is no data, and you know this, that law enforcement officers treat black males different than white males in policing in these urban There centers. is data that's... There is not data. The argument between Lemon and Clark is a perfect example of the tug of war over the perception of the statistics of police violence versus a particular race. Furthermore, the argument displays the divide between the people of the United States and the full-blown propagandized media intent to foment division among the common citizens of the United States. We want you to know that our hearts are out there marching with them. 
Here at CNN, a panel of commentators moved by the protests put their own hands up after the grand jury decision. And that intent is becoming more and more apparent. Comedian and actor Kevin Hart recently pleaded with other celebrities to speak out on his Instagram. Hart wrote, I'm asking that my other fellow celebrity friends, entertainers, producers, writers, directors, athletes, all take a day out of your schedule to simply talk and try to come up with a solution. I don't want to see a war in any way, shape, or form. I want to see change. I want to see the justice system change. I want to see people walk the streets without fear. The changes have to come from the top. We can do better, people. Don't let the media force a race war. Rapper Joey Badass echoed Hart's logic when he wrote, What the government is doing amongst our people is downright disturbing, but not surprising. With all of the conflict and propaganda, I believe they are simply trying to start a civil war within the USA amongst black and white. They're simply pushing us to our limit so that we can all get together and rebel so that it makes it easier for them to kill us, black people mostly, and anyone who acts out against them. Recently, Obama took a blowtorch to the raging inferno of the growing divide spiraling out of control in the United States. As Town Hall reports, predictably, Obama fanned the flames calling on the U.S. to do better and said that the controversial incidents arising from the police use of force were not isolated incidents, but rather were symptomatic of a broader set of racial disparities that exist in our criminal justice system. He continued, when incidents like this occur, there's a big chunk of our citizenry that feels as if because of the color of their skin, they are not being treated the same. And that hurts, and that should trouble all of us. Ted Nugent, the Motor City Madman, responded to Obama's race war cheerleading. Nugent writes, the evil man is doing this on purpose. He wants a race war, but we will not give him one. Obama will go down in history as a maniac America-hating freak with his fundamental transformation scam. And if you still think only black people are being shot by police, well... But when police kill, should they judge themselves? Police officer had taken a gun, put it right to his temple, and fired a, a fatal shot in, in the backyard here in front of his mother and his sister. Uh, he was grabbing Michael by the neck, and he grabbed him by, by the shoulder, and within a couple seconds, they took him off camera. Police and county investigations declared the shooting justified. Uh, within two days before the crime lab report, uh, before the autopsy were complete, uh, they had cleared themselves of any wrongdoing. This is video taken by a passerby. Dylan has been shot. Police won't say if Dylan had a weapon, but his brother and cousin say he emphatically did not. He had his headphones in, he couldn't hear nothing, and they finally surround him. Is when they were like, you're on the ground, I'm going to pull up his pants, and I shot him. <laughs> Arms out to the side. Are you all? I don't have a weapon. Hey! Get your. You can't son, do that. Get your hands behind your back. You're under arrest. You can't do that. Get your hands behind your back. Hey, officer, what are you get doing? Get your hands behind your back. You're under. Officer. Ow! Oh. He was lying in bed. He wasn't reaching for a weapon. Two people barged into his room, and 10 seconds later, were unloading 16 bullets into his body. The shooters were Department of Corrections Officer Chris Rongan and King County Deputy Aaron Thompson. They'd arrested a parole violator at this Auburn house, but surprised Theo Harris in bed, shooting him when they mistakenly thought he was reaching for a gun. Get your hands out! Get your... Get them out! Yeah, there's a race war, all right. A war on the human race by random trigger-happy police that our justice systems rarely prosecute. But it still doesn't mean all police are capable of committing the same heinous criminal acts. You want to solve this? Take a unified stance against the justice system. More murderous cops in jail means more accountability. Meanwhile, the last remaining officer, Lieutenant Brian Rice, on trial for the death of Freddie Gray after not securing Gray's seatbelt, walks. Wouldn't it serve the establishment's race war agenda to have those police responsible for Freddie Gray's death to go free? Cannon fodder for a race war hyped by the globalist mouthpieces over at the mainstream media? Perhaps maybe we should all just repeat what the globalists have been whispering among themselves for decades in order to sober up and face the truth. 
The seeping soft war on humanity we are all faced with, waged by corporatized eugenics programs, expresses the elitist sentiment that no lives matter except for those of the elite, because full-scale eugenics programs are all around you, utilizing a monopolized handful of media conglomerates to generate fear and disinformation, all for the sake of pitting us all against each other. No lives matter. Think about it, George Soros-backed Black Lives Matter protesters, while you block traffic, putting your life and everyone else's in jeopardy.